Hey guys, how's it going? Happy New Year. I hope you've all had a really wonderful holiday season. It is currently snowing outside. We had not a white Christmas. It was a pretty dry Christmas uh, and it was a lovely day. Like it was a beautiful day outside, but now it's looking like winter out there. Um, it snowed for most of the night, supposed to snow for most of the day today and tomorrow. And then we are expecting lows of negative two degrees Fahrenheit this Saturday. Which keeps changing though. At one point I saw it was negative six. Oh, you did? Not there's probably a huge difference between negative two and negative six. Well, you six, know what but... though? If I could see a zero, like a positive number instead of a negative number, yeah. that makes me feel better. But we have been moving things. Like we cut the heat in the greenhouse. We just have it as a cold frame right now because I have nothing in there that requires heat yet until I pot up some of the stuff in here and move it out. Um, so we cut the heat. We moved Japanese maples that are potted in there. Some other potted items like my little bird topiaries that are boxwood just to take the edge off that cold Cold, um, it's likely they would probably be fine because they're fairly acclimated to cold. It's been it's been decently cold here. It's not like it's going from a low of 40 degrees down to negative two. Um, they are sort of used to it, but I just wanted to protect them as much as possible. So we've been kind of making that shift. We also like we're covering up that hole like that leads to our, I need to turn my phone off. Um, that leads down to our well room. Like all the pipes are exposed right, right there. So we're getting that all covered up today. Um, just making those small steps to make sure everything is okay this weekend. But anyway, I don't know. Christmas for us was just a wonderful, like, it feels more Christmas outside right now yeah. than it did on Christmas Day. It wasn't um, a white Christmas for sure. It was a really beautiful day and it was really relaxing. I feel like this whole holiday season has been that way. Has it felt that way for you? I don't know. Yeah, it's, has been, it, it's been nice. I feel like, like my decorations, everything was more simple this year and just like not forced. You may have noticed we did not do a Christmas decor tour inside because I just wasn't feeling it. I mean, it was all decked out except my black and gold tree, the lights. All of the lights except for one strand went off and I could not, I can't figure out how to fix it. I've got to take it all apart now. Um, and so like that tree was pretty much done for the season. I don't know. I just, I feel like I, I feel more freedom this year with what we do in terms of, I don't know why I feel like that in, in my whole life kind of like I just do things as they come up naturally yeah. and I'm not forcing anything. And I feel like that is a way that's a sure way to create longevity. Well, you've had a couple of really tough holiday seasons uh, in the last five years. Yeah. Because you were very much right. pregnant for two of them, two out of the yeah. last, Ugh, you know. Not this one. Oh. Three or four. Yeah. So maybe that's why you feel so much more freedom this year because you don't, Just, like, <laughs> you're not I carrying think, a yeah, child. Yeah, maybe. Last year was rough. Um, and then a couple of years before that, it was rough with Benjamin right around Christmas because I had both babies in January, but you don't have easy pregnancies. Uh, like your you body delivery not built is fine, for it. Yeah. But, but the carrying is <laughs> yeah. difficult I think the insides are not shaped right somehow. And it's my ribs are out the whole time. And I don't know. Anyway, that's not what that is about. I don't know. I just wanted to kind of, cause I've seen a lot of uh, questions about where's your holiday decor tour. And I did see those come up, but I, I gotta be honest, like I didn't even feel bad not filming one. I just thought, you know what? No, I'm gonna like just do things when it feels natural and when I want to do it, not necessarily because I have to do it. And I see that like with a lot of people who are content creators or whatever, you know, you feel this push with seasons and I've talked about it before. There's such a seasonality to everything and you have to start super early and you have to start decorating early so that you get your content out faster. I don't want that for my life. I wanna do things with the natural rhythm of life, like the same thing you guys are doing. Like I want my life to kind of be the, the same and not feel like we have to do certain things. So anyway, yeah. And New Year's is always a, a fun time. My dad's birthday falls on New Year's Day. So it's, and then the kids' birthdays are coming up here really quick, the 12th mm -hmm. and the 18th. Um, so it's just a busy time. And I'm always thankful that everything kind of happens right now when it's so quiet outside. I mean, we just put up a video on d organizing pots in the barn. And that's the kind of stuff we're working on right now. And kind of in that vein, I would love to know what your guys' is, your guys' is, is that mm -hmm. right? What your guys' is? New Year's resolutions are like in your garden or personally, I get so motivated by hearing people's resolutions, whether or not you feel like it's attainable or not. I feel like just setting something and kind of working slowly towards that goal is positive. 
that's where I'm at this year anyway. Yeah. Some years I don't even want to think about resolutions. I just want to live my life, you know? So wherever you're at, I would love to know. Some of mine, which I explained in one of the videos, was to organize and uh, purge. Like just organize all the nooks and crannies in my life and get rid of stuff that's just unnecessary stuff that I haven't been using. I tend to hold things because we do so many creative projects that I think, oh, I could use that little piece of moss in another project or I could use that little figurine or whatever. I don't know. Or that rock. I mean, I hold on to rocks because I've got a neat shape or something and I feel like I could use them later, but then that becomes this problem yeah. in the end. I'm not, we need a warehouse. I'm not like a hoarder, really. Well, it's just, you know, it's like the nature of the beast when, you know. When you do I projects. mean, like, you know, junkyards are helpful. <laughs> yeah, you need a little bit of this or that. Yeah, it's like yeah. it makes sense for, some, for a person to have, you know, a thousand cars because... You can grab little pieces off of them <laughs> well, or whatever. I'm not that bad. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a thousand cars sitting out there, but I have made pretty good strides already. Uh, it's my goal to go through one drawer per day in our house, just one, and that means taking everything out of it, just wiping it out. So I have, um, I'm putting together, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna put together like a little, my own little cleaning caddy that has like a spray bottle with my cleaner and um, rags and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, I think I'm gonna wipe everything out with peppermint and essential oil. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I haven't done that on the drawers I've already finished, but I think that would be really, that would smell really good. Anyway, so we'll clean them all out and then put everything back in one piece at a time, getting rid of stuff as I go. And I have a huge giveaway pile already. It's massive Yeah. already. And I've gone through, I've, I was so motivated in the when I very first started the project that I think I've done with like 15, between 15 and 20 drawers. And I've done several cupboards and then one closet per month, which we have 10 closets. I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> Like I have a checklist. It makes me feel so accomplished to check that off. Yeah. And I know by the time I get done with all of it, it's gonna need to be done again, but maybe that's a good habit to start. Just like these slow, consistent efforts, little consistent efforts to get it done. Um, anyway, what are your goals, Aaron? <clears throat> I, you know, I don't know if I really have a whole lot this year. Um, I haven't really thought about it a whole lot. No? No. In the garden, I think my goals are to get some things done, like around the, <laughs> I'm gonna get the area around the Hartley done, not done, but a good portion of it started and the bone structure. And I think that should be the goal is just the bone structure. If we have like the hedging and trees and stuff kind of in place and then we can fill in as we go. Mm -hmm. But I would love to have that, a large portion of that done. I'm not, it's not a huge goal of mine to tackle the back garden yet. Cause I, I feel mm. like, I want to check off some of our bigger holes, like getting trees in the grassy area yeah. and that sort of thing. I, my only concern about the back garden is the, I want to plant really tall, like big things back there. Mm -hmm. um, not big when you plant them, but I want them to be big in yeah. the end. Yeah. And I feel like uh, we're, every year we're just missing another opportunity to get stuff established You're right. and growing. When you put it that way, like it makes a lot of sense. Like get the stuff in the ground because five years later, if it takes you that long to get yeah. to that project, you'll have five years of growth. That's, that's an enormous And that's all I really care about. I don't care about the design of it. I, I Well, I want to have a design and then I want to start placing the large things, mm -hmm. the things that are going to get large. Yeah. Again, like you mm -hmm. might buy a, you know, five foot tall, whatever it is, yeah. and it'll end up being 30 or 40 or 50 feet tall in the end. Right. But, you know, if you can give it that extra... And some trees that put on a couple of feet, two, three feet a year, I mean, that's 15 feet of growth. That's enormous. Yeah. In five years. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I think that um, I also want to, like, personally, I want to cook more. Like, I want to actually cook a lot more of our dinners <laughs> and be more organized about that um, because I really do enjoy it and I want to elevate the whole process. Like I want to be purposeful in actually using our nice dishes and, um, making it beautiful mm -hmm. instead of saving those things or m maybe thinking it's not worth it to pull them out. But I want to, uh, as I'm organizing, make things more accessible and easier to pull out so that it's, you know, we can create something beautiful quickly. It doesn't have to be a fancy meal or anything, but I don't know. It fills me to do that, to have a pretty bouquet of flowers. Simple, like a pretty bouquet of flowers, a couple candles and pretty dishes, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, I think we should get into the videos from this last week. We only had four uh, because we did take a short week. We did not post on Christmas Eve, which was Friday. And then of course we take Saturdays and Sundays off posting the main channel. So that was three days off in a row on that channel. And we did post the recap though on Sunday. So 
Anyway, we only have the four. Uh, the first was the Rickrack Cactus Epiphyllum Anguligar Care Guide and Repot, which that was fun. I mean, it was very specific. I mm -hmm. know that plant is, it's not like you can go to any garden center and find it. It's just like one of those things I saw it show up and it'd been so long since I had seen one that I thought I've got to I gotta pick these up. Yeah. So it's one of those things that like just kind of keep your eyes open and if you were interested in the way that looked or having one, uh, maybe that would help be helpful. Like you can recall this video, um, <clears throat> but I just wanted to talk about it and then get it repotted in a nice concrete container. And it has kind of a, like it's called a cactus. It's like a jungle cactus though. It's not like a regular cactus. So it kind of went over the care differences and it looks like a succulent fern to me. I love ferns yeah. and they're so hard to take care of in our area because it's so dry inside particularly um, that it's kind of a alternative to that for me anyway. Uh, first comment was from the Plantastic Nerd. My grandma had one of those guys for many, many years. Last year I accidentally broke off an end, accidentally, and she insisted of me taking it with me. Now I have something to remind me of her, God bless her. That's, that is special to have pieces of plants from yeah. um, other things. That just reminded me though, like I accidentally broke a piece off Monica, my sister, um, when we were working at the garden center together, she, like a fountain would come in that she'd really like. And she'd be like, I think I should go get a hammer and make a little chip in that. And then I can go in the half off pit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then, and then I could have it for half price. <laughs> just reminded me of that, I don't know why. Cindy said, during the winter months, when you're moving your plants from one location to another, studio to greenhouse or studio to inside your home, for example, how do you keep them protected from the cold air? I bought a plant at the supermarket once and it was damaged by the time I got to my car, so I'd love to know how to keep it, them safe. Run. <laughs> I don't know, I just like move as fast as possible. I also like have tea towels that are quite large and they're really thin. I'll just pop a tea towel over the top of the plant, um, oftentimes if it's small enough, and that will help it. That's really, that's really it. I mean, just trying to cover it somehow um, is really the only way you can go and moving quickly. Janelle said, neat looking plant reminds me of the zigzag ribbon, which is why the plant is called rickrack. I mean, or one of the common names because it looks like rickrack, which I learned about in the gingerbread making video. My mom said she needed rickrack and we were like, what the heck is that? I mean, I had seen it. I had seen the ribbon, but I didn't know what it was called, but it was kind of funny when that is what the the cactus is called. The snow is coming off the greenhouse like crazy right now. Huh? Really? Yeah, like big chunks of snow. Just sliding right off. Sorry, I have like a front row view out this window. It's distracting me. And Nina said, did Aaron chuckle when you said the bags were getting stronger? <laughs> it was referring to this. Oh. Yeah. So I wanted to show you because I was talking about how like either I'm getting weaker or these bags are just really hard to open. Um, so, and people are like, it's zippered. Like right. you should be able to open it. Well, let me show you. This is a brand new bag. It is zippered, but when you initially open a bag, it's also sealed. Like it's together right here and you have to pop that seal open. And then after that point, you can open and close the zipper mm -hmm. and the zipper actually matters. But right now the zipper doesn't matter. And it is just, like, it is so hard to open. I do not remember that with the old bags. Maybe they uh, are using like a new sealer. A new adhesive. Sealer, yeah. Or yeah. maybe it's a thicker bag. Or... Ah, I love the zippers though. It's so nice. Vidalia said, how do you water your succulents from the bottom or the top? I usually put mine in a tray with a half inch of water and leave them for an hour or so. Is that a good idea? Yeah, that is a great idea. Um, bottom watering is usually preferred for most plants. That way they can just suck up what they need and you don't have any water on the leaves. I typically water mine from overhead because it's just quicker and I don't have to come back through and empty saucers out because that's a total pain when you have as many plants as I've got back here. And then of course we have our house plants inside as well. Um, I do though, if uh, I've got African vines I do typically water those from underneath. That's the only one that I'm pretty uh, diligent about doing that with. But if you have the patience and uh, time to do it from the bottom, do that. Danielle said, great video and great plant. You use cactus fertilizer for the rickrack, but what do you use for regular house plants like pothos, ferns, etc.? Liquid grow from Espoma is typically what I use. In fact, I just did a half strength liquid grow on our seedlings, so our tomatoes and peppers, uh, cucumber, dill and basil, I just did the half strength and then I hit everything else in here at the same time. Uh, so liquid grow about once a month usually, depending on the plant. You can go every couple of weeks too if you want. Anne said, what about them makes them a member of the cactus family? What is it that they say, like all cactus are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti? What is it? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Isn't that what you asked me the other day? Uh-uh. 
I don't know what makes it a cactus. <laughs> um, well, you're the expert. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. That is so funny. Um, I, I saw another comment on the plant unboxing. They're like, how did you not know what that plant was? Do you know how many plants there are on this planet? And I don't remember stuff. Like, I just don't. I don't keep well, it in. Well, you remember a lot, though. I remember quite a bit, but I don't remember everything. And so occasionally I'll come across a plant and then maybe I'll think about it later and be like, oh, yeah, I've had one of those before. Right. I shouldn't remember the botanical name. Um, how does that go though? What is that saying? Like, I gotta look it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. I mean, there's like the Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving and Easter cactus. They have kind of the same look as the rickrack cactus yeah. does. They just have different, they come from a different part of the world and So just, does that mean you can just, like any succulent, you can just call it a cactus? No, all cactus are succulents, but all, so all cactus, you could say it's a succulent. Oh, it's the opposite. Okay. Right, and then, but not all succul succulents are cacti. Huh. Does that answer the question though? No. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a <laughs> nice little anecdote. <laughs> yeah, there, you, there you go. That's how I'm going to answer that one. Paula said, I find the blooms don't last long. They dry out. Do you cut them out? Uh, they only last a day, I believe. Uh, I haven't had mine bloom. I actually haven't seen one in person blooming before. Um, so I've just seen pictures and I've taken care of them before, but not to the point of blooming. In fact, a lot of times when you're keeping them inside and they're and or they're being moved around or if you don't have a mature plant which most of the time I haven't been taking care of a mature plant because when you take care of them at the garden center they're in and out in and out in and out so you've got like baby plants all the time uh, and so I don't oftentimes get to see something particularly come to fruition um, unless I have one at home and that's one of the reasons why I wanted one here so we'll see what happens um, Marilef said, do you clean pots between planting? If so, how? The only time I actually clean pots, pots, I think it's technically proper to clean them out between each use. You clean them with like a one part bleach to 10 parts water solution. Um, but I only clean them out like that if I've had an insect problem. If there's been mealybugs or aphids or some kind of disease or whatever, um, that's the only time I'll clean them. Otherwise, they usually just sit in the barn for a long time, really dry, and I feel like nothing can survive that. <laughs> for too long. Um, so I'll just use them even if they have a little soil still left. Kylie said, you mentioned in this video and a few others for succulents and similar plants about letting the cut leaf dry before planting it back in the soil. Do you have to do this? Why is it done? So the reason why it's done to dry your cuttings is, is that if you have a calloused end, there's just far less of a chance for any kind of rot to start happening. Um, you can take a fresh cutting and pop it down in the soil. The only difference is if you're using a fresh cutting in an arrangement, you wanna wait a while before you water it because that cutting will still receive oxygen even in that drier soil. Uh, it'll just take a lot longer for it to dry. So you might wanna wait wait a week or two before you water your arrangement. If you let your cuttings dry, you can put them all together in your arrangement and you can water it right away and there's just no guessing as to whether or not it's dry in there. Uh, for us, it usually takes three-ish days for a callus to form, but we're really dry here, so it might take up to a week, 10 days for you guys. I've let cuttings sit out for a few weeks before I've used them. Um, and you might see them start to wither up a little bit at that point, like get them planted and get them watered. Uh, but it really doesn't hurt them all that much to sit out a little bit longer if that's what happens with yours. I would say for beginners, definitely um, let them dry before you put, it in, put them in an arrangement uh, as opposed to using fresh cuttings. Lori said, should we add moss around the cactus? I wouldn't because, I mean, this one you could. Absolutely could because this one can take a little bit more moisture and humidity. For most other cactus, I would say no because it's too much moisture. For mine, I'm looking at it right now, it's to my left here on a table. Mine, I'm not gonna add anything because I feel like I want to be able to look at the soil. I can tell a lot visually by how the soil looks, whether or not I need to water it. So it's helpful in the case where you don't see a whole lot of soil, which that pot's pretty full, um, so I don't really notice the soil in it. It's helpful to see the see it on a weekly basis. Flute Enthusiast says, didn't the cactus mix soil have a zippered opening? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, explained that already. Next video is taking apart and rebuilding a succulent arrangement with cuttings. So I had made that low bowl arrangement right around Thanksgiving. It used three echeverias, three taper candles, some greens and berries. The greens were of course dried out. Uh, the taper candles were done. We really enjoyed it. Like I had it on a, a table in between two chairs in our great room and we lit it several times when we had people over. Then I moved it up to our island because I shipped things around all the time. And I enjoyed it up there for about a week or so. And at, after that, I thought I need to get this taken apart and create something new in here. Anyway, I thought it would be a really good opportunity to one, show you how those echeverias had done. I had no idea if they had started to root or not and they had 
a lot of roots going on. It was also an opportunity. I'd already taken cuttings of a bunch of things I had in here already, and they were dried. So I thought I could talk about how to behead a succulent, um, how to root the leaves, all those sorts of things. So that was what we did. And I was really happy with the outcome of that arrangement. I think it turned out pretty. Megan said, I found your channel several years ago as I was searching how to make a succulent ball. The video was great and very informative. That was a long time ago. That was in the last ago. house, one yeah. of our first projects. Yeah, and very informative. However, my arrangement did not turn out well. But through my failure, I have learned so much about succulents and landscaping from your videos. My mom, who lives in Georgia, her garden is like the cover to a Better Homes and Garden magazine, came up to New Jersey visit to visit this spring and was so impressed with all my new plants and flowers. Everyone kept saying, oh, I can tell your mom was here. And I said she was, but this was all me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love hearing things like that. It is such an encouragement to me to hear how our videos have maybe helped you guys, um, I don't know, just learn and create and uh, maybe not feel bad about ripping stuff out of your garden that you don't like. I'm just kind of like recalling some of the comments and just giving you the confidence to go ahead and it's okay if you fail. Uh, it's okay if you have to try a couple of different things to find the right plant for your spot. It's just really encouraging to me to hear how um, it's just brought you guys joy. Your spaces are bringing you joy and that makes me happy. Love Dog said, Laura, this is beautiful. Does the container need a drain hole? I wanna give these a try next year. That container does have a drain hole. I did not mention it because I was using the soil I had put in there for the original arrangement. So I just, it was out of sight, out of mind. Um, but that pot does have a plug that came with it. So I could use it as a non-draining container or, or a draining one. Uh, it's not 100% necessary to have it drain. Uh, I, if you're a beginner, definitely make sure your pots have a drain hole. I mean, it's best. Like 99 times out of 100, it's better to have a drain hole than not. But I have done several arrangements without drain holes. You just have to be incredibly careful about how you water and you have to be able to read your plants. You have to know what signs they're showing you and so on and so forth. So it's definitely not something it, like even with my arrangements, I try to make sure there's a drain hole if at all possible. Jamie said, if my succulent is struggling, how do I know if it's getting too much water or too little? So if your succulent's getting too little water, the first thing you'll notice is the leaves will start to look puckered. They'll start to look like they're just like really thirsty and they need water to fill their leaves back up. At that point, you would probably wanna give them a little bit of water. You might also notice some leaves starting to dry up and fall off, but that could also be, that's also a normal thing that succulents do. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they need water. Um, if you notice dry leaves and puckering of leaves, it could be the, uh, too little water problem. Too much water, you'll notice the leaves starting to look a little bit um, like waterlogged, almost. It's like they get kind of this clear look to them and they'll start to get mushy, they'll fall off. Um, the whole plant, like the stalk, might start to get um, mushy and uh, yeah, lower leaves will start to get mushy and yellow and start to fall off. Anyway, yeah, you wanna catch those things before they get too far, too far gone. Silly Girl said, question unrelated to this video, but I've heard you refer to vases that have a frog all throughout your videos over the years. I've been wondering, what's a frog? A frog is something that you put in a container to hold your stems in place. There's a whole bunch of different types of frogs out there. Um, there are like the little uh, metal ones, so they're really heavy. And then they've got a bunch of spikes that you stick your stems on. Um, you can also take uh, branches, like we've used scarlet curls or willow branches in general that are really flexible and you take all the leaves off and then you just kind of curl them up in a ball and shove them down in your vase. Uh, I, and those work great for a clear vase because they look pretty in the water. Um, I've used chicken wire as well. You just take a piece of chicken wire and kind of like crunch it up into a semi looking like sphere shape, stick it down in your vase and then your, your stems can go in the little holes. Uh, those, that only works really well for opaque faces that you can't see through. Um, people still use um, foam, like the wet foam o oasis. Uh, there is some negativity about that and the sustainability of that. I only use it in very rare, usually occasions if I've got a really shallow, like I've got some pedestal vases that have really shallow wide bowls. There's no way that I know of to create an, a, a frog without using just a, the tiniest piece of that. I don't have like really strong, um, opinions about that. Um, there's other things. I have used moss before. I actually read uh, Beverly Nichols. I was one of my favorite authors. He writes some really funny gardening books, um, like in the 20s, 30s, I think. Anyway, he used mud. <laughs> like He just put straight up mud in his vases that were uh, not, you couldn't see in them, but he said like, that works the best. You put mud in there, it's heavy. Nothing can tipple, topple over and you just stick them in there and it works great. Probably does. 
I personally don't want to clean out that mess in the vase, but anyway, there's um, other options too, like clear plastic, uh, little round balls that come apart. Uh, you snap them together and you can stick them down in a vase. I haven't really used that much because the ones I have don't really fit any of my vases. They work kind of like chicken wire, but you could probably Google and find a bunch of different options of frogs to use. Joanne said, when you put a bunch in a single pot, do the roots get tangled to where you can't pull them apart? Uh, yeah, I mean, they will grow together like that, but when you pull arrangements apart, oftentimes I don't even pull them by roots. I just take cuttings again and reroot them in the next arrangement. You can pull them apart though, and I've done that. Buddha said, ah, this video brought back some memories. The first video I saw from you guys was a similar dismantling of a succulent arrangement. I was like, why is this lady killing these poor plants? <laughs> I've been watching every video since and even made some succulent arrangements myself. You guys also inspired me to start my own garden. It's very eclectic because I just love plopping down plants all willy nilly, but with every passing growing season, it gets tidier. Thank you guys for making my thumb a little greener one video at a time. That is so awesome. And it was, this video did feel like we were kind of hearkening back to our for, like beginning days where we used to do a lot with succulents. You know, it, things have evolved because when we first started this channel, uh, we didn't have a big, I mean, we were in a townhouse. What was our lot size? It was one sixth of an acre. One sixth? One sixth. Sixth. It was, I mean, it was- our parents, my parents' lot was a third and right. ours was a half lot. Uh, it was a half of theirs. Right, right. So, I mean, it was great size to start with. It was an attainable size. We were both working full time and um, it really, it was fully It was our first home that we bought. I mean, it was, like yeah. a, it was just a starter home. You yeah, know? Um, but it was great. Like, do you ever sometimes think like, oh, it'd be kind of nice to go back to that. Yeah, I, I do <laughs> yeah. actually. Like scale it way back and yeah. not have all the maintenance. It'd be difficult. Uh, it was nice because it was just the two of us. So it yeah. was like a 1500 square foot house, right. which is like a great size for two yeah. people. Um, you know, I mean, it wasn't great, like, if we were hosting, you know, people over. Mm -hmm. we, you and I were always kind of like, oh, man, it'd be nice to have a bigger living room. But um, just There's for the two of us. There's always those things. Yeah. yeah. It worked great. It'd be tough with two kids nowadays. Yeah. To yeah. go back to that. It we would. could do it. We could totally do it, but it'd be... But the, yeah, it just, we had a different variety of videos because a lot of the things we did were just smaller projects. We didn't, I didn't do really any landscaping at all. Like I didn't do any, watch well, me plant this, you, remember you, you know, were out my so, garden. Uh, your garden was like your diary. Like yeah. you don't show that to anybody. Like yeah, the backyard I was, was private. I was very private about my garden. It seemed like you really opened up moving into this garden because none of it was yours. You know what I mean? When you, when you walk into an established garden, you didn't make a single one of those decisions. So it's a little bit easier to, to show things and just right. be like, well, I didn't choose that. Right. So, you know, yeah, it is true. what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, next video was huge house plant unboxing. So little Prince sent us out a box of plants. That's always fun. They contacted us and asked us if we would like to open up a box of plants. We were like, yeah, yeah they contacted like a while ago, actually. Oh, really? Um, and then you and I were talking about, you know, how we should uh, maybe order some plants or something. And I was like, oh, I should just tell them they can go ahead and like send us a mystery box, you uh -huh. know, which is, it is fun when you don't know what yeah. they're going to send. Yeah. Yeah. Opening that up and seeing. I didn't look at the list of plants and I know you didn't either. So no, it no. truly was like a mystery for both of us. Yeah. There was a list on top of the box when I opened it, but I pulled it out really quick because I, you know, you could see the top of all the plants and that was just like <gasps> refreshing just to see some fresh green growth. That was really fun. I've since been pouring through their website and I'm like, oh. I've got a long list. Uh, Kid Who Loves Begonia said, I absolutely love your videos. I'm only 13 and was somewhat into flowers, but when I started watching you a few months ago, wow, I'm actually hooked on flowers and I'm a lot and have a lot of projects planned for 2022. Awesome. Best of luck with all of your projects. It's fun to feel that motivation and that inspiration to like do stuff. Christina said, I looked on their site. Do you know, did you know they have two specialty boxes named Garden Answer? I thought that was pretty cool of them. Do they really? Well, I think what they've done is they, whenever they send something, uh -huh. they sell like that box. Oh, so that's you can, handy. Yeah, yes, you can, because yeah. they know what they sent. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah. Oh. So I did know that. I, I was on their website. I didn't see anything like that. I must not have been in the right area. Yeah, I don't know where the link is. Um, they sent me a link to that specific okay. like, mystery, that box or I whatever. And that's what I included shop in the video. Plants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like right. wanted to see everything. I was actually specifically looking for hellebores, uh, but I don't think they actually sell hellebores. 
Oh, really? I didn't see any on their website, but yeah. I found a lot of other things that were really interesting. Evelyn said, do you still have the hosta that Plantarina sent you? Um, she didn't send me a hosta. She sent me a Hoya. And yes, I still have it. It's still kicking. It's looking beautiful. It's still in the same pot. It was in um, like a white ceramic pot, but it was just sub, like subbed down in there and it's pl plastic pot. It's still sitting there exactly hmm. the same in the same spot. And it's done so well right there. I just I don't want to move it. Marjorie said, love plant unboxings, fun seeing all the different plants. There was, there were some that were new to me. How do you care for all of your plants with the house, the studio, and your greenhouse? It must take hours. Um, you know, right now I come out here daily to the studio because we have seedlings and that's actually really helpful because it keeps my eyes on things a lot more frequently. Um, so out here, the plants out here, uh, some of them get water once a week, some of them get water every day, some of the seedlings do, um, some of them every couple of weeks. In the house we have a every Monday watering kind of schedule and most everything except for like I've got some philodendrons and stuff up on a top shelf that I don't water as often maybe every couple of weeks and they tend to do really well with that. I would say inside plants probably take 30 to 45 minutes a week and the studio collectively, maybe the same. It's not that bad. Craig said, is there no Christmas tour this year? I love watching your Christmas tours each year and seeing how you decorate your beautiful house. Yeah, I did talk about that already. No Christmas tour, I still have most of it up, which is atypical of me. Here we are. Yeah, a yeah. lot of times you get it down on like, like Christmas day or the right, day after. Right, like I'm usually ready for it, but I've been so like relaxed about it this year and just like really enjoying it. Um, we do have Benjamin's tree from his bedroom. We have that undecorated. He and I did that the other night and he he enjoyed that. I, and Samantha did too. I think she was just like waiting to pull ornaments off a tree. She's like, you're giving me the green light? Yeah. Okay, I'll help you with that. So we pulled all the ornaments off and the paper chain, that's what we use as a garland. A colorful paper chain is super cute. In fact, I think I took a picture. We can pop it up on the screen of what it looked like this year. A little bit different than last year. Last year, I went to the dollar store and bought a bunch of cars and then hot glued twine to him to make him into ornaments. And Benjamin was just right, like just going to be turning three. And uh, he wanted all those cars off the tree and he was pulling all the strings off because he wanted to play with them. Like they were toys to him. Um, so we didn't have very many ornaments left on the tree by the end of the season. This year I bought a bunch of Christmas balls. There's colorful ones, blue, white, red, green, glittery ones. They looked really cute. Um, so that tree's still sitting there, but we haven't, yeah, it doesn't have decorations. I haven't undecorated anything else yet. Uh, so that'll be happening in the next little bit. I'm just waiting until the mood strikes. That's like what I'm going with these days. Carl said, gorgeous plants. Does anyone know the make of the knife Laura is using? That was a common question. This was the one I used, right? Whoa. Yeah. Where'd that come <laughs> from? Uh, I got it in an unboxing, in a mail time. Oh yeah. And it says home planet gear right here. And it just like razor blade. It's awesome. I really like this one. I like it feels substantial and I like the little holder thing, like the little yeah. thing. Yeah. Home planet gear. Risa said, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember a few years back that you had a video on string of pearls propagation. And I seem to remember you had a well-established plant from where you lived at the townhouse. Did you lose that plant or give it away when you cleaned out the old plant room? So what happens with my plants is that I start piecing them out into other arrangements. You know, when we do little projects here and there, I don't, if I have a plant, I don't go out and buy a new one. So if I want like the string of pearls accent in a planter, I'll just go like, take a little bit from my other plant. Um, and so my stuff just gets kind of like, it's all over the place. Like, so that one, I remember which one you're talking about. Uh, it was beautiful, uh, but I just used it in other things. And that makes me happier than like going and trying to find a specific plant. If I already have it, I just use it. Shandy's Garden said, are they wanting you to fill your Hartley with the higher zoned beauties? I don't know if they're wanting me to fill it with the, Har the Hartley with them, but I'm gonna, <laughs> that's, that's what's gonna happen. Monica said, am I the only one that saw the Swiss cheese plant and thought a critter had lunch on it? Um, no, you're not the only one. In fact, those type of plants, like they're growing on me slowly, but I, I still feel the same way a little bit. It's like a leaf cutter bee has come in. Like when the leaf wasn't quite, it wasn't all the way unfurled. It's like something take sure. a chomp out of it. So right. that when it opens like a pattern of circles yeah. in there, kind of like making a snowflake with 
folded up paper. I feel this, the same way about a lot of those types of plants. And our last video from this week was organizing our messy pot shelves, which I've already kind of touched on a bit, but we just had that wall in the barn. It's actually right on the back side of this wall here where all of our pots are and they just become a complete mess. And we had a huge pile behind the barn, still do with the bigger pots, but at least they have some order to them now. Uh, but it was just such a satisfying project for me to do because it's, yeah, it's just been sitting there looking like that. And I've known like all the vases that needed to go inside. I've been seeing those as I walk by and I know they need to go inside, but I just haven't purposed to take care of it until then. So anyway, it feels good to start fresh. It also feels good to know what I have. So when I get ready to start a project, I don't feel like, oh, I need to run down to the garden center and pick up this size of terracotta pot or that kind of saucer or whatever. I know what I have. So, um, yeah. I don't buy unnecessary things. Top comments from Kim, video posted eight minutes ago and already 700 views to watch you organize pots. Uh, I could literally watch you do just about anything. Your channel gives me something to look forward to with your transparency, realness, and kindness. Your energy just gets me dot, dot, dot. It's cut off at that point. But thank you, Kim, for that comment. I am glad that this type of video resonates with some of you guys because they do for me. When I watch other people organize and clean, like it really motivates me to get after it. And even if I take one thing from a video that I watch, like a type of storage container that they used or how they've lined things up in their drawers, like how they fold their towels even. I'm, I mean, seeing how other people do it can kind of <laughs> open my, my mind up or my eyes up to new ideas and how I might be able to make better sense of my space at home. So anyway, it was nice to read that. Seasons with Anthony, Anthony said, do you have a favorite pot? Ah, favorite pot. Do I have a favorite pot? If you had to guess what my favorite pot was, what would it be? Like a container? Yeah. Like, well, it would be concrete. Yeah, um, well, concrete for sure. My guess is your favorite one would be the on the walkway on the west side. The What's Galloway that called? Urn. The Galloway Urn? It's, it's tops for it's sure. It's like really close up there if yeah. it's not number one. Mm -hmm. um, There's some something elegant about the the shape of that and the, yeah, the, the proportions are the, just esplanade Perfect. urn on the west yeah. side mm -hmm. i know that you really like yep um, I, the thing i like about those i mean we have them on pedestals so they look very stately there but their their design is understated it's not a heavy heavily produced design it doesn't stick out from the the pot mm -hmm. if that makes sense like it's very subtle it's mm -hmm. a subtle design and i really like that no yeah, i like it too i like anything basket weave i'm a huge fan of basket weave pots yeah. I've got, I think they're called ribbon and some, I don't know what they're called buttons in unique sounds. <laughs> no, all I can hear is Fraser singing buttons, yeah. buttons when you say that. Um, no, I've got the ribbon, oh geez, whatever they're called, in front of the vegetable garden. I like those a lot. I like the leaf motif urns that we have by the black bench. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of pretty containers. I also like the garden jardiniers. How they said they mm -hmm. they're pronounced anyway. I the fourteen that we have. There's the simplicity, but still like this the size of them. I mean, they're just really pretty. And I, I went with those because they have a little bit of ribbing, but not a lot of design. And we had fourteen of them, so I didn't want it to be too heavily designed on the pots because I didn't. I would think that'd have been too much. A little bit. I don't know. There's a lot of pretty pots out there. I like pots. Kathy said, what kind of bird seed are you using? Is it the kind that doesn't germinate? I always have so much seed sprouting, it's a mess. No, I'm not using a no sprout blend. No sprout blends are fairly expensive. I'm using a wild bird mix that we mix down at the garden center uh, and it's specific to the birds in our area. So a lot of it gets eaten. There's not a lot of waste. And I can't tell you even what's in it because I can't remember. I'd have to look at the list and the percentages. Uh, Mildred said, which bird feeder design do you like the best and why? You know, I really like of all four of the bird feeders that I have out there. They all work really well, but I noticed that two of them get hit the hardest, the one copper one, um, and then the other one that's kind of a long skinnier tube. Those are always empty. Um, but I always notice like this morning, all of them are full, it's snowing, and I notice all of them are clustered under the feeder with the canopy, which the canopy I bought separate from the actual feeder. The feeder I think came from Gardener Supply and it has like a little cage around it so just the small birds can get into it, keeps the bigger ones out and squirrels out. But the, the shroud that goes over the top just keeps the birds protected from any kind of weather, you know, that's coming down. So that's where I noticed them this morning. In fact, I took a little video out our window because they were all underneath it on the ground or in that specific feeder. Jason said, why are organizing videos so satisfying? I don't know. It's like watching fire. I just did the same thing with my planters on a much smaller scale and it does feel so good to get organized, but I still can't explain why it's so fun 
to watch someone else do it. Do you like those, Erin? Do you like watching organizing videos or you like watching like equipment videos, equipment getting things yeah. done, which is kind of the same yeah. vein, I, I guess. watch, um, okay, so here's some of the channels I watch. Andrew Camerata, yep. oh man. He just blew up the side of his like mountainside. That side. was fascinating. I yeah. watched that too. Um, with dynamite. <laughs> like it's so funny the the equipment that he buys. Uh -huh. And I also love that he seems like just a regular dude that's just, you know, doing projects. Yeah. And he just found some success with YouTube and he just films everything with a GoPro. Mm -hmm. um, I watch a little bit of outdoors with the Morgans, not as much as as I for a while I was watching him more. Um, I watch Courtney, um, What's his channel? Uh, Good Works Tractors. Mm. Um, he, I mean, his channel is really to like kind of sell equipment oh. and and implements and stuff like that. But but that's you found very helpful because we've made it. To yeah, buy that's things. the funny thing about like yeah. advertisements. Like he's, uh, I bought something off of his website. Um, What'd you buy? The aerator. Oh really? Well, I mean, it, he doesn't. He sells it, but he doesn't produce them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I like. So those are your regulars those are, kind of do some... Yeah, and then there's, of course there's like tech channels that I watch like MKBHD, mm -hmm. a little bit of Linus Tech Tips, although he's a little bit more in the Windows side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be really interesting to go through both of our subscription lists on YouTube. I don't even know who I'm subscribed to. Really? <laughs> nah, I don't. Yeah, you don't consistently watch anybody. No, I just kind of hit and miss yeah. things as I have time. I feel like because, well, the reason the Garden Answer started was really because... You. Uh, well... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back, but it's it was because I had more of an interest in yeah. YouTube. And well, I that's 100% needed... the reason. It's not a yeah. pat on the back. That's the, that's factual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like even today, watching videos is a little bit of like research, sort of. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like just keeping a pulse on what types of videos people are making. Yeah. And you get really good inspiration. Yeah. Like in the same way you, you tell me that like you going out and just planting things or working at Andrews, mm -hmm. there's like certain things that you do that inspire you to do more of that thing. Right. And come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. So I feel like watching videos is for me kind of the same. Yeah. Getting good ideas of like, oh, we could do this. Right. Because somebody else did something similar. Yeah. Or it just sparked an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to say, which um, I don't know if you'll have seen this video before or after this video goes out, but I did spend some time down at the garden center this week and I told Aaron like that like fed me. I was down there. There were other people like here we are like dead of winter, you know, and there's people in there shopping seeds and like super excited about the season and we're talking like I was shopping seeds too. <laughs> like I, I was shopping seeds and um, so like a gal and I, we were just talking over all these uh, varieties and what, how we've had good luck and what we haven't had success with. She just told me she planted 4,000 lavender plants this last year, starting a lavender farm. And it was just fascinating and, uh, to talk to somebody else who's gardening. Uh, she's gardening a little further away from us up in council. So it's a little bit of a different growing zone, a little colder, uh, a lot more snow. But I just, I felt... Um, just fed being down there listening to other people get excited and looking at house plants and I told him like I need to spend more time down there I miss that spring energy and feeding off of other people's energy and that's why like going through comments and reading some of these things like it's it's hugely fulfilling to me and it feeds me so anyway I think we kind of got off on that, but anyway. Allison said, what is your opinion of the aquapots? Uh, you have passed on your enthusiasm for organizing to me. Uh, aquapots, so I feel like they have filled a niche or a void, I guess, in the market of self-watering containers, which, uh, you know, are fairly new-ish within the last how many years, Erin? Like, there have been different types of self-watering containers, but not, like, on the scale well, the that they are now. Ceramic. Are you just talking about self-watering well, in self-watering in general? general. I mean, like, the dot containers we started using. The last 10 years. Yeah. Probably. And those are plastic. They worked really well for us while we had them. There were, you know, pros and cons to it, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I think that the aquapots have filled a more, like, upscale version. Um look I guess mm -hmm. and you guys know with my style aesthetic I tend to not use a lot of ceramic I don't like bright colorful things I like my plants to be the bright colorful things I just like a more subdued look uh, but I always appreciate seeing them in other people's landscapes and seeing them like flanking a garage door something like bold and beautiful mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm just not brave enough to, to go with it I don't know um, the one thing that I really wish for all self water containers is that there was some kind of really good gauge to tell me what the water level is like in the uh, 
in the reservoir. With the dock containers that are plastic, they are so lightweight that it was really easy for me to tell when they needed to be refilled because I could just like nudge them a little bit like with my leg. Same with the pots at uh, at the splash pad. Yeah, those are, you could really what tell, you brand could are those? You almost see it, uh, Again, Earth Planters. Earth Planters. You could almost see it. If you kind of looked at them and the light was shining uh -huh. just right, you could see where the water was. Right. Also, you know, since they're light enough, you can bump it right. with your Aqua pots though, they're so heavy already because they're ceramic it's really hard to tell when they need to be refilled. So I think it's something that like, and I haven't tried them out extensively um, enough to know, like, I, you know, every type of plant's gonna react a little different. If you have a sweet potato vine in there versus something else that doesn't require as much water, you may need to fill it way more often or way less often, depending on your climate as well and where you have it positioned, it'll all depend. Um, there's a little like overflow hole on the back uh, that I would just have to fill them up until I started seeing water come out the back and then I would know it was full, which means that for me, putting them on like a wood surface, which is probably a small minority of us that would need to use them on a wood porch or something, um, like our front porches, it really didn't work out that well unless I had a saucer underneath them, which is the case for any other normal pot. Um, or if you, you know if you live somewhere that doesn't have hard water and it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's well, you don't want the water to be settling on wood. But you're talking yeah, like concrete, right. yeah, you're like right. cement areas, uh, concrete. Anyway, um, yeah, and so eventually we'd have like a hard water uh, pathway where all the water would come out the hole. Right. So you definitely have to position that pot with the hole toward the back, mm -hmm. which then it's kind of hard to see because they're so heavy and you're like trying to look around the back side. You don't want it to show because you can't get the hard water off of it. Um, so I don't know, I haven't really, I don't think put them through paces enough to like really nail like how much to water and how efficient and that sort of thing um, because I just don't use them around here enough. But I do see where they fit a definite, like ceramic pots are huge. Case. Well, so here's what I think is that, um, I think if you like ceramic mm -hmm. and uh, you are in a situation where you can't do drip, drip is better. Oh yes. Like, just do drip if, if you yeah. have the ability to do drip but you know like at the splash pad yeah. you know there's certain areas where it's just like there's just no way you're it's not going to get yeah it's all concrete you're not going to rip it up and right. there's no way to do drip um so for cases like that they they would work mm -hmm. um and if you just put it on there's no gauge but really there's no gauge on any of them yeah you know works. the dot planters have gauges they worked great for the first year it was like the three little floats it was yeah. just a float system which people have said even with the aqua pots put a cork in there cork on a long stake right. uh, which is a great idea honestly because you could mark you could start with the reservoir empty mm -hmm. put the cork all the way to the bottom mark the stick you know and then it I would still float. think the way a lot of them are shaped i think the cork would get stuck on the side i but don't even know then, that if you go. knew if you knew how far that was yeah maybe like if you just did a little bit of research before you filled your pot with soil yeah and that way you could see that line and see you know how full of water it is and then you could see it come down that's a really a great way to create your own one thing system. that i do think that aquapots has that other systems don't is that you can clean them out fully yes at the yes, end of the year you're right. you can yeah. take it all apart and that's one huge complaint i have with earth planter and and, and the true drop containers yeah. because you you can't take apart the two drops because the They're it's all, all plastic it's molded yeah. mm -hmm. and then the earth planter same yeah and they've got the carpeting and i've always wondered if you know after a certain number of years you know the carpeting is supposed to be like a wick system yeah but like that's going to get moldy at you know, mm -hmm. at what at point does it become point, inefficient? Yeah, but I, I think the the true drop, or I'm sorry, the aqua pots, you know, it's just that plastic insert. Mm -hmm. And I think that plastic, I would think, would probably last forever. And mm -hmm. if it did break, you could buy another one. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that those aqua pots have built in ledges, like ceramic ledges, and then the, the hole. Uh -huh. um, and then those inserts fit perfectly in there. Uh, but yeah, you can take all of that out because if you have a grass in a true drop, um, especially I've heard of this happening, with, especially with the tut grasses that are water hungry, they reach down and they want to start, like Plugging they plug the all the holes to where the rest of your plants can't get any water. The grass is just sucking it all up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, there's all those different considerations. For you though, the number one thing that it doesn't meet is aesthetic. So it doesn't yeah. it doesn't meet your design aesthetic. So yeah. like it kind of you don't like cross it off the list because no. like you still do projects for other people. Oh yeah, and things like that. So it's uh -huh. still like it's a useful product. Yes. just not in your garden specifically. Right. Mm -hmm. It would be super useful to me on the wood porch up front if there was a really solid gauge. 
Yeah. Because then I wouldn't have to put a saucer under it. But none of them really have, I mean, all of them have an overflow. Um, you never know if the dot planter gauge is actually functioning properly. You know, I don't know. Gray Legrand said, I spy new vans. Did you order the comfy style? No, I actually ordered those on Amazon. I usually have um, vans custom so that I can pick out all like the different colors. And so these are a little weird because that little piece of like, what is it, that stretchy material, elastic. Um, and the front, the two on each either side of the top, I usually get in black and these are white, but I needed some quick because I was looking at my shoes and I was thinking about like the Christmas Eve service at church. And I was like, I have heels, snow boots, and vans with huge holes in the sides. So unless I wanna go heels, which I ended up dressing up a little bit more, um, I don't have any other shoes except for snow boots. Like that's, pfft. I need to have a pair of shoes that's like decent to wear around town, you know, so my mom doesn't call me a hobo. <laughs> she usually does. Uh, anyway, so I ordered those and got them pretty quick. Uh, I do need to order some more shoes though for this next year. Jillian said, hi, Laura. First off, I'm totally addicted to your channel. You have ignited a love for flowers and gardening that I didn't know that I had. My partner and I just purchased our first house and I'm building a beautiful garden inspired by you. Is there a way to get the stains off of terracotta? I don't know why it drives me crazy. Okay, I know I have OCD, but I tried scrubbing them over some and it didn't work and Kathleen said patina is the goal with terracotta don't scrub that off um, I'm kind of with Kathleen on that one I don't really have a great answer as to how to clean terracotta and how to clean those marks off uh, but let me tell you like if I saw a pot a uh, stack of pots one of them clean brand new like spanking new spanking spanking new brand spanking new brand spanking new terracotta versus a pile of terracotta that had that like white and like green and like those marks I would buy those patinaed pile. Um, that is kind of the aesthetic that a lot of us are going for with those. It's funny though, because uh, to teach their own, we all have like a different idea. Uh, when I potted up all the lemon cypress and uh, amaryllis and stuff to give away as hostess gifts, I used a lot of the pots that I already had around. Some of them had heavier patina than others, but I know like the specific people that I wanted to give those pots too. Like if I'm giving something to my mom or, you know, a couple of my other friends, um, I know that they would really appreciate the patina on the pots, but other people like maybe a more clean, more modern look would want more of a clean one. So I kind of like divvy them up based on that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. I don't know what kind of cleaner you can use on terracotta though. It's so, like such a porous material. I don't know what Maybe you guys have some suggestions. You could leave us in the comment section. Linda said, you have fabric? Are you a quilter in your spare time by chance? Do tell. I have fabric. I'm, a, I'm kind of a fabric hoarder a little bit. I used to be worse. But the reason why I initially, I do, I have made quilts before. Like maybe four quilts in my life. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't buy fabric for that though. I bought it for um, making curtains that I never made and kind of like what I've got going on in the great room, <laughs> um, decorating. So I decorated for several weddings where like I use, I might even have pictures, I don't know, but I had a bunch of just like this creamy colored cotton um, that I used on a big gazebo and kind of just had it all draped. And it was nice to have just big amounts of fabric on hand. Um, we used to do a lot of other, like, like at Andrews or, other events. I feel like we used to do a lot more of that stuff where we drape, drape tables. So anyway, I ended up with just totes and totes of fabric that I need to organize. And right now, because I was scrambling, I was trying to find my tartan plaid table runner, which I never found. And like that guest room where all the fabric was, it's just like that closet erupted in that room. And I need to go through it. That's one of my closets. That's going to be hard because I think I just need to get rid of a bunch of it too. That's going to be a tough one. I have lofty ideas of doing lots of different things and then I'll go get some supplies and they can kind of get tucked away for a while and I kind of forget about it and I don't know. Lillian said, beautiful garden. I have a large tree in my yard with no small low hanging branches. They're all giant ones. Where did you get those hooks or hangers that you are feeding the bird feeders or you're hanging the bird feeders on? Those are just called S hooks. My um, parents garden center sells them. I think most garden centers would have something like that. I'm not sure if box stores maybe do as well, but they're just like the giant S shaped hooks. And I love the longest one I have has a giant S on or a giant side to where you can really get it over bigger diameter branches and you can reach higher up in the tree. And that's a super helpful one to have. I don't know what brand they are. I don't know. That would be a really weird thing to ship. Like how long and mm -hmm. like, they're not heavy, but they're long and kind of weird shaped, but Anyway, yeah, I would check with your local garden center. 
And that is it, you guys, for this week's recap video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a really wonderful start to the new year, and we will see you in the next video.